Thank you for the introduction. I'd like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation. It's a lovely conference. Um, so everything I say today is uh, joint work uh, with um, Alex Gorodnik. and uh, Amos Niveau. Okay, so uh, over this uh, week we've had uh, several very interesting talks about uh, Diophantine approximation and uh, quantitative estimates for uh, distribution of uh, rational points and uh, discrepancy of uh, uniformly distributed sequences and so on. Uh, so, uh, uh, my talk today is going to uh, be on the same theme, but in a slightly different setting. And the setting is uh, uh, the natural question of what happens if I were to look at a variety with a nice uh, rich set of rational points and ask uh, similar questions for uh, points on this variety. Okay, so uh, this uh, particular kind of thing namely trying to do Diophantine approximation on varieties is uh, not a very old subject. In Dong Han's talk yesterday, we saw some examples of this. He was uh, computing this uh, beautiful Lagrange spectrum for points on uh, the one sphere and the two spheres. So we want to do, uh, address similar questions for a larger class of varieties. So this question of trying to do Diophantine approximation on varieties, namely uh, trying to see if uh, there's an analogous metric theory of approximation, like Kinchin's theorem or uh, Yarnick's theorem or analogs of uh, badly approximable numbers, well approximable numbers. This question was raised uh, concretely by Serge Lang in the 70s in a survey. And um, for a long time, uh, nothing much uh, happened. There is some nice uh, results by uh, Walschmidt and his co-authors, which have to do with abelian varieties. Okay? And these, are, these results are very closely related, as you'd expect, with uh, transcendence type results. All right? So today, I'm going to look at a class of varieties which are uh, quite different from abelian varieties. And these uh, varieties are um, come equipped with an action of a nice Lie group. Okay, so they are going to be homogeneous spaces of semi-simple Lie groups. And for the most part today, I'm going to try to I'll give some examples of what our new results are. But for the most part today, I want to try to uh, convey to you the message that uh, arithmetic on these varieties is very closely connected with harmonic analysis on these varieties as well as geometry on these varieties. So uh, I'll give uh, some in, uh, examples of what we can prove and then try to uh, convey to you a method using uh, what is a subject which has come to be known as uh, homogeneous dynamics, how this can say something about Diophantine approximation. So that's the goal of today's talk. Okay. So uh, let's begin with some um, uh, classical results. So uh, a result which everyone here knows is uh, uh, Kinchin's theorem. Okay. So it says, uh, for example, uh, that uh, if I fix a uh, function psi, which I'm going to fix to be uh, decreasing or non-increasing, although, uh, as we know, uh, this can be relaxed in high dimensions. And uh, we are going to consider the inequality uh, x uh, uh, minus uh, p over q uh, less than uh, psi of, uh, say, um, uh, q. Okay, so x is some uh, uh, vector in, say, Rn, and I want to uh, uh, get good approximations uh, for x, uh, and the extent of the approximation is measured by psi. And so uh, Kinchin's theorem says that um, uh, 
so uh, star uh, star has uh, so for almost every x uh, star has uh, infinitely many solutions Uh, if and only if uh, uh, a very natural uh, sum uh, converges, so this is uh, the sum as t goes from uh, 1 to infinity of t to the n minus 1 uh, psi of t to the n. Okay, so we, we all know uh, what this is. This is uh, basically uh, borel Cantelli. So this convergence theorem is a borel cantelli statement, and uh, the good thing is that uh, the divergence uh, part exactly matches the convergence part. So the kind of uh, theorem that I'm interested in is, uh, suppose I give you a variety like a quadratic surface, or a group like SLNR. This uh, variety has uh, some nice uh, features in common with Rn, namely it has a dense set of rational points. Uh, X is in Rn. Uh, everything is happening in Rn. Okay, so uh, is it possible to uh, prove uh, analog uh, of this result for, uh, say, a uh, uh, group variety? So, for example, what do I mean? So. Uh, this statement is a quantification of the density of Qn in Rn. And uh, it's uh, known, f uh, I mean, uh, you have a very rich class of uh, uh, varieties, affine varieties, uh, which uh, also enjoy this property, namely uh, their rational points are dense in their real points. Okay, so for example, uh, you could look at the spheres uh, which in low dimensions came up in Dong Han's talk, or you could look at uh, some nice Lie groups like SLN, uh, SP2N, the spin group, uh, or you could look at rational quadratic surfaces. So the question we want to address is, uh, given such a variety, uh, this has a dense set of rational points. So can I prove a theorem of this uh, quality where uh, my uh, real points, uh, the point I want to approximate lies on this variety, and the rational points I want to uh, approximate it by uh, also lie on this variety. Okay, so it's like uh, doing Diophantine approximation, but uh, both the x's and the p over q's have to satisfy some algebraic equations in addition to this. Uh, you could if you like. No, no, I'm, I'm not doing it here, but you could if you like. It's uh, No, it doesn't change. I think it changes uh, if you uh, uh, make it uh, uh, co-prime, then uh, uh, there's a, a phi function somewhere uh, over here because of the count. So that, that. Yeah, to, in today's talk, I only consider a fine variety. So uh, 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 it, it's good to fix some example for uh, the talk. So uh, you could uh, think about uh, uh, one a simple uh, case to think about would just be the group, uh, say, SL2R. So two by two real matrices with determinant one. It turns out that the two by two rational matrices with determinant one are dense in the real topology. So I want to approximate a real matrix by rational matrices and build a theory of Diophantine approximation for this. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all right, so uh, there's actually a, 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 a very strong uh, uh, extension of this uh, due to Wolfgang Schmidt. So let me uh, state a Schmidt's theorem. Okay, so uh, what Schmidt does is he does the natural uh, 
extension, he counts how many solutions you have up to height t and provides an asymptotic uh, formula. So uh, let's say, uh, set up some notation. So uh, nt of x is the number of uh, uh, solutions uh, p over q uh, n, uh, say a q between uh, 1 and t, and uh, a solution of star. Okay, and uh, so uh, the asymptotic uh, expression is uh, uh, the following. So for almost every x in Rn, uh, the number of such solutions uh, is uh, exactly what you would expect, namely it's uh, this sum up to t So um, let me uh, call this uh, V of t uh, plus uh, big O of uh, V of t, uh, uh, square root of V of t plus epsilon for every epsilon positive. Okay. So this V of t, uh, the reason I denoted V of t is uh, because uh, as uh, you would have guessed, it uh, uh, basically uh, is some uh, uh, sum of volumes uh, uh, summed over the rational solutions of this. So uh, this is basically summed over uh, p over q in say uh, 0, 1 to the n, uh, q less than t. And this is the volume of the ball around p over q uh, of radius uh, psi of q. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, by 2? Uh, may maybe, yeah. So th there, uh, okay, so there might be some uh, uh, constant here. I'm not sure. You're probably right. Okay, so uh, this is exactly the main term you would expect. So if you let t go to infinity, uh, you get the right answer. And uh, it's a very nice uh, uh, square root error term. So uh, it's fantastic. And this kind of thing has the, uh, the flavor of a discrepancy result because uh, this somehow uh, if you take uh, uh, the difference of ntx and vt and normalize, then this tells you something about the discrepancy of the rational points which lie in small balls of this group variety. Okay? So, uh, my co authors, uh, Gorodnik, Nevo, and I have been uh, trying to study this problem for about uh, four or five years now. And uh, we uh, uh, previously defined, uh, uh, gave bounds for exponents for uh, these affine varieties and also proved. Uh, versions of Kinchin's theorem for these varieties. So the new work that I want to discuss uh, today is uh, analogs of these counting results as well as uh, discrepancy results and how to prove them. So let me uh, state a couple of results and uh, then I'll try and motivate the proof. Okay, so uh, uh, first, uh, uh, I want to, uh, I need to, since I'm working on some variety, I need to know how many uh, rational points I have at my disposal. So uh, this is encapsulated in uh, uh, the following quantity, which uh, is some sort of a growth exponent. And so this is a supremum over uh, uh, compact subsets. Of, uh, of the group of the limb soup as t goes to infinity of the number of rational matrices in this group. So uh, like in yesterday's talk, there was this uh, 
uh, B-adic uh, exponent. So in order to make the uh, exposition uh, uh, cleaner, I'm going to try to uh, prove uh, analogs of uh, Schmidt's theorem and Kinchin's theorem for rational points which, whose denominators are powers of a fixed prime. It's just easier to set up for me. Uh, the theorems are true for rational points, uh, all rational points, but this is easier for me. So uh, basically I'm taking a finite set of primes uh, and inverting them or actually just inverting uh, one. So uh, this is all uh, rational points which belong to uh, uh, this uh, 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 compact set omega uh, whose denominators or heights are at most t, okay? So uh, you should think about, in this kind of statement, you think about uh, a G to be SL2, say, or the spin group, and uh, these are all uh, two by two matrices with determinant one, whose entries uh, have denominators which are powers of P. Okay, so uh, here's a theorem. Ah, yes, yes, okay, that's uh, true. I should divide by uh, T. Um, Yes. Yeah, so let me see. So I want the number of rational points to go like t to the a. So the only thing is, have I divided by the right thing to uh, allow that to happen? Um, <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want. Uh, um, yes. So. The. Yeah, I'm missing a log. Uh, maybe I take a log here. Uh, okay. Thanks. Over log t. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, all right. So I want to. Uh, uh, a study a similar inequality to that. So the inequality is uh, uh, star star, uh, which is uh, x uh, minus uh, gamma. So there is this. Uh, so you fix some norm on this group and you take the difference of x and gamma should be at most a psi of uh, the denominator uh, of this um, matrix, where gamma belongs to. Okay, and uh, so uh, we have exactly, uh, I mean, a similar result to uh, Schmidt's result, and uh, uh, it is as follows. So there will be two theorems today. This is theorem number one, and theorem number one uh, says uh, the following. So uh, let me set V of t uh, similarly uh, to over there uh, to be uh, the sum of these volumes. So it's sum over rational points. Uh, 
uh, of the volume uh, of the ball uh, around uh, x of uh, radius uh, psi of uh, height of gamma. Uh, and uh, then the theorem uh, says that uh, if I take a special choice of functions, so let uh, uh, psi of x be of the form x to the minus b. So if b is uh, uh, at less than uh, 2 uh, sigma a divided by the dimension of g, then for almost every x, almost every real matrix, the number of solutions to star star, which I again denote by ntx, is uh, vt of x. Uh, plus big O of uh, Vt uh, uh, of x to the alpha, it's for some alpha less than 1. Okay, this is the result, and uh, there's one thing I haven't explained to you here, which is uh, there's a new parameter here, uh, sigma, which uh, hasn't been explained. I'll, I'll explain this shortly. G is a semi-simple uh, linear algebraic group. So to think of uh, SL2 or something like it hold, uh, so uh, it, it should be uh, any semi-simple uh, Lie group. You might need uh, uh, one or two more conditions uh, to make sure that uh, these rational points are dense. So something like uh, simply connected or some natural condition. So. Uh, uh, yeah, so if you generally take a linear algebraic group, then the set of rational points uh, need not be dense. So you have to uh, impose some conditions, but otherwise it's uh, dense. Uh, connected, simply connected. Yes. Yeah, there's a property uh, of uh, uh, algebraic groups called a uh, strong approximation. So it, it's known to hold for all connected, simply connected groups. Okay, so uh, let me uh, briefly mention uh, what are the, uh, what is that, what, what kind of result this is. Uh, so um, first of all, I need, I owe you an explanation about what is this sigma. I'll, I'll explain it shortly. But uh, uh, Basically, uh, in this kind of uh, uh, approximation, you could ask for some kind of uh, Dirichlet theorem, like a pigeonhole principle, which gives you the, the e exponent on the nose. So that exponent, it turns out to be uh, two times a divided by, uh, so a divided by the dimension of g. Okay, so this two sigma is uh, uh, an extra piece of information which is not helping us. But in many situations, which are interesting, the sigma turns out to be a half. And so the two and a half cancel and give you the right exponent. But the method that we use provides, uh, needs this uh, thing, which is a spectral parameter, which I'll explain shortly. Okay. Okay, let me state the second uh, theorem, which is a discrepancy estimate. And uh, okay, so theorem two is a uh, is sigma independent of uh, p. Um, Okay, so, so sigma basically uh, is the this uh, measures the failure of temperedness. Yeah, so so it's independent of. Okay, so uh, yeah, so the theorem two is a discrepancy uh, kind of estimate. for uh, rational points on uh, varieties. So uh, what do I want to do? So I want to uh, 
Um, uh, basically, uh, so let's uh, define uh, uh, over here, say, uh, R of t uh, to be the uh, just a set of rational points in, say, gz1 over p uh, with bounded denominator. And so what I want to do is uh, I want to look at some nice uh, boxes in uh, in uh, this uh, in my uh, group. So basically, I'm uh, going to uh, uh, take a small boxes uh, around a point with um, uh, on my group, and I want to find uh, matrices inside this small box uh, which have bounded height and also satisfy some uh, congruence condition. Okay, so uh, for example, um, so let's uh, define a set omega to be uh, uh, pairs, uh, say, uh, of a, a, a real valued matrix and a, a p-adic matrix. Uh, So uh, hang on, I don't want it to be the same prime. So let's, uh, let me call this uh, a v-adic matrix. Okay, so uh, I want uh, the, the real matrix to belong to this uh, small ball. And the p-adic matrix to satisfy some congruence condition. So uh, suppose it's congruent uh, uh, to, uh, a matrix A uh, mod uh, uh, mod uh, a third prime uh, M. So I'm fixing uh, uh, three primes. So one prime uh, gives me my rational points, and uh, uh, this this uh, defines some kind of uh, congruence condition. Okay, so uh, I want to see whether uh, I have the right uh, number of rational points when I look at very small balls around the real matrices, and these rational points also satisfy some congruence condition. And so uh, uh, one way to uh, measure this is to uh, measure the discrepancy. So uh, let's uh, define the discrepancy to be uh, the number of uh, points in, in the set uh, R of t, so bounded uh, height, intersected with uh, omega. Uh, divided by the number of points in R of t minus uh, the volume of omega. Okay, so then uh, the theorem says that uh, so there exists uh, explicitly computable uh, kappa one kappa two such that um, so the L two norm of this discrepancy. is uh, bounded between, um, uh, so uh, the cardinal, uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, the set of these rational points, so it's bounded between uh, R of t to the uh, minus uh, kappa 2 above and uh, below. Okay, so uh, for example, if uh, G is the spin group, uh, then uh, kappa 1 uh, is uh, uh, 2 over n minus 3, and kappa 2 is uh, 1 over n minus 1. Okay, so uh, this is the kind of uh, result that I want to uh, talk about today. Um, I should mention, of course, that uh, results of this kind, namely discrepancy estimates on uh, varieties, have a very long uh, history. Uh, lots and lots of people, including uh, people in the audience, have uh, studied them. Uh, the works which are uh, philosophically closest uh, to our work are, um, so many results, uh,
on uh, discrepancy estimates, especially on spheres. So uh, since our results work for group varieties, it uh, only works for uh, the one sphere and the three sphere, which are the only groups. Um, but the method, uh, it should, should be possible to extend the method to uh, all homogeneous spaces of groups, but we haven't done it yet. Uh, but the most philosophically uh, similar are uh, the works of uh, Lubotsky, Phillips, and Sarnak. And, uh, and there are many uh, uh, related results. So for example, there are some uh, results uh, on uh, finer questions like local statistics of points on the uh, sphere due to uh, Burgan and Rudnik. And, um, and several other uh, very recent works of um, uh, Parchan Zevsky, Sarnak and others. Okay, so this is a, a very uh, incomplete, I mean the bibliography of uh, discrepancy points on the sphere is rather large because it's a very well studied topic. This is a kind of, uh, these works are the works which somehow relate uh, to ours uh, philosophically. And there's also one uh, recent um, so, uh, uh, Talebi uh, Zadeh Sardari. Okay, so let me try uh, and explain how uh, one can approach uh, this kind of uh, result. Uh, so basically, uh, the idea is to, uh, so if you want to study discrepancy estimates on the real line, then uh, of course uh, the main tool at your disposal would be continued fractions. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. It came up also in Dong Han's talk. Uh, but uh, in this kind of uh, context, of course, uh, we have no hope of having uh, continued fractions. So uh, in this subject of homogeneous dynamics, we have uh, somehow built a, a weak replacement. So a model of a group acting on a space which uh, uh, somehow models Diophantine properties. And so one example of this is uh, what we're going to use today. But before I uh, get to that, let me try to, um, uh, so uh, uh, convince you that there is a, a dynamical uh, reformulation of uh, Kinchin's uh, classical theorem. So let me try and uh, model uh, the Kinchin uh, theorem on the real line for you dynamically. And uh, this will give an, uh, an idea of uh, the kind of thing that we'll use here. Uh, so uh, I want to study solutions to uh, x minus p over q less than, say, psi of q. And uh, the way we go about this is uh, uh, to uh, consider the space uh, SL to R factor SL to Z. Of uh, lattices in R2 with uh, co-volume 1. So this is a moduli space of all such lattices. Uh, it's a finite volume uh, non-compact space. So each point on this uh, space is a lattice in R2 with co-volume 1. And um, uh, so uh, uh, it turns out that uh, if you, uh, so uh, given this real number x, you can attach to it uh, uh, a lattice in the following way. So you uh, look at the upper triangular matrix with entry x. And uh, multiply the lattice z2 with this matrix. So this gives you, uh, given a real number, this gives you a marked point on this homogeneous space. 
And uh, then it turns out, so let me uh, call this lattice uh, u of x. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move this point around using a uh, group action. And this group action is going to be uh, the action of the diagonal matrix So some of you might uh, find this familiar because uh, this uh, matrix uh, basically is the uh, geodesic flow on the modular surface. But it doesn't matter, it's just a diagonal uh, matrix acting on the space of lattices and moving everything around. And so what you can uh, prove is that, uh, so dynamical correspondence, you can prove that, uh, uh, so, um, Let's call this uh, star. So star has uh, infinitely many solutions. If and only if uh, something uh, interesting happens here. So this function psi uh, cuts out a sequence of uh, neighborhoods of infinity, okay? And uh, this inequality will have infinitely many solutions if and only if uh, this orbit hits those hits those uh, sequence of sets infinitely often. So uh, let me uh, call the sequence of uh, sets uh, B sub psi. So these are uh, neighborhoods of the point at infinity. So if if and only if this happens for infinitely many t. Okay, so it's a version uh, of something which uh, came up in uh, Ling Min Liao's talk and, uh, called shrinking target property. So uh, there's a target which is a point at infinity and there's a sequence of balls which are collapsing to this target at a rate which is defined by your function psi. If you manage to hit these infinitely often, then you get infinitely many solutions to your inequality and vice versa, okay? And once you have this observation, you can use uh, purely ergodic methods to give a proof of Kinjin's theorem. So this is the kind of thing we'd like to do uh, in this setting as well. So what is the lattice and what is the space? Uh, So uh, in the setting of um, uh, group varieties, we have uh, a theorem due to uh, Borel and Harish Chandra, which says uh, that um, if you look at uh, the diagonal embedding of uh, uh, the one over p points into the, uh, the real points of the group times uh, the p-adic points, Uh, then uh, this also gives you a, a, a lattice. So uh, it's, a, it's a space uh, very similar to this. It's a finite volume uh, space. Uh, and for example, if it's uh, SL2R you're after, then it's also uh, not compact. Okay, so um, our problem uh, that we want to study involves uh, trying to uh, look at uh, some uh, subset of this group variety. Uh, there's a point in this uh, subset and uh, some small ball around this point inside which I want to place uh, a rational point with some prescribed complexity. That's what I want to do and I want to count all such possible rational points with prescribed complexity inside uh, this small uh, ball. Uh, so uh, uh, similar to this, the way you model uh, uh, this is to consider uh, the action of the p-adic group on uh, the homogeneous space uh, 
over here. Okay, so uh, this is some, uh, uh, it's not a compact space, but it's the next, next best thing. It's a finite volume uh, space, it's a probability space. And um, uh, so basically uh, finding uh, 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 a rational point here of some complexity uh, corresponds to the following uh, dynamical situation. So this uh, small ball or the shrinking ball here uh, corresponds to a ball around, say, the identity coset. And uh, this uh, point, uh, uh, this real matrix X, uh, I can uh, connect to a, a point in this homogeneous space by just uh, 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 mapping it to uh, the point X comma identity in the product of the real and the periodic group and looking at the corresponding coset. Okay, uh, so uh, starting with a, a real matrix, I get a coset, so let me call the coset X tilde. And then uh, I take a, 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 I take a sequence of, uh, I look at the orbit of this point under a, a sequence of balls in the periodic group. And my job is to try to efficiently hit the small neighborhood of the identity coset. If I manage to do that, then I will get a rational point with uh, the property that I want. And so uh, uh, I have basically a, a very similar kind of correspondence to what I had over here, except that uh, uh, now uh, it's not the neighborhood at infinity, it's uh, some uh, sequence of shrinking balls inside the space and I need to hit it efficiently. And so you can imagine that uh, somehow um, in order for this to happen, the orbit of uh, X that I'm considering should be equidistributed in this space and I need to give some quantitative uh, um, estimate of how finely it equidistributes. This is where the spectral parameter comes in. So let me uh, introduce it. Okay, so basically, in order to study uh, uh, the orbits of uh, such points, we need to, uh, um, so we all know the ergodic theorem, uh, which says that uh, if you have an ergodic transformation on a probability space, then the space average equals the time average. So here we are going to set up a situation, a similar situation, uh, with a very big difference here, the space average is going to equal the time average, but we are going to have an estimate of how quickly, okay? So this is the beauty of uh, ergodic theorems with semi-simple groups. They give you a rate of convergence, which is what allows us to provide arithmetic applications like this. All right, so let's uh, set up some notation. So B sub T is a periodic ball, okay? So uh, it's a bunch of periodic matrices whose height is at most T. And uh, uh, I'm going to define uh, uh, an operator. So this operator is going to be called pi sub t. And uh, it's going to do the following. So it's going to uh, uh, average over this periodic sphere. Okay, so this pi of t uh, uh, of x is going to be one over, so the normalized um, average of, uh, so, okay, so I, I should, uh, see, so basically uh, I'm going to take F in uh, say L2, uh, orthogonal complement to constant functions of uh, this uh, homogeneous space. And um, so I'm going to, uh, so basically in order to study, uh, as we know, in order to study these uh, actions, it's uh, very profitable 
uh, to study uh, representations instead. So we are going to study the representation of the periodic group on L2 of this quotient. And uh, uh, the, the uh, way to do it is to uh, look at the following uh, operator. So this uh, operator um, takes the function uh, and uh, averages it over. So it's f of uh, g inverse uh, x uh, d uh, m uh, g. Okay, so this uh, should be thought about as uh, the time average. So the time is represented by these, uh, how large these periodic balls are. And uh, we want to say how uh, well these uh, uh, averages uh, equidistribute. So the theorem uh, says the following. Um, so theorems like, the, like the, uh, this ergodic theorem actually uh, go back to uh, a long time ago, work of uh, Niveau and Stein uh, and uh, uh, others. Uh, uh, so sometimes, uh, depending on the application, you might have to do a variation of the argument. And it says that, um, so there exists uh, 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 sigma positive, uh, such that uh, if I look at the L2 uh, difference, between uh, the operator and uh, the average, uh, the integral of the function over this quotient. So let me name the quotient uh, x. Uh, then this is at most uh, mm, uh, the measure of the periodic ball uh, to the minus uh, sigma. times L2 normal, okay? Uh, so this is the sigma that comes up in that theorem. Uh, another way to think about this sigma is that uh, it's, uh, so this kind of uh, action of a periodic group on this quotient uh, is usually studied using uh, matrix coefficients for the representation. And the sigma is uh, somehow uh, measures the extent to which the matrix coefficients are integrable. So it's an important uh, object in uh, analytic number theory, uh, automorphic forms, uh, et cetera. But uh, somehow, um, so uh, the argument in proving a discrepancy estimate or an analog of Schmidt's theorem involves uh, translating the problem to this dynamical system, uh, running the ergodic theorem on the dynamical system and translating it back. and. Uh, the great thing about this uh, kind of uh, uh, approach is that uh, there's no loss of information in the translation. So whatever uh, loss or gain, it's uh, entirely coming from the ergodic theory. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll stop in uh, five minutes, but let me just say uh, one thing. So. Mm, Another very interesting question would be uh, the following. So there are uh, lots of people who are uh, interested in this kind of representation just for its own sake. And so uh, the theorems that I wrote down uh, tell us that if someone tells you what sigma is, then using our result, you can get some uh, concrete information about discrepancy. Uh, but one can also ask the uh, converse theorem. So uh, namely, if someone gives you the good information about uh, rational points on uh, on a sphere or a group variety, can you produce the spectral estimate? And uh, so, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we can, uh, for uh, semi-simple, simply connected groups, uh, if someone gives us a uniform estimate on the discrepancy, we can produce a sigma. And uh, so then we started looking in the literature for estimates which we could apply, and we found one of uh, Heath Brown for rational quadratic surfaces. So using this, you can uh, 
basically uh, run this uh, machine in reverse and produce uh, a sigma, which uh, it's like a, a periodic version of uh, uh, Selberg theorem. Um, so it, it doesn't produce any uh, a fantastic bound, but it's just a, uh, a nice way to get a spectral bound. Okay, I'll stop you. Uh, can we do better uh, than Heath Brown? Um, no. Uh, uh, oh, just for the classical Kinchin theorem? Uh, uh, so basically, um, you would need. Uh, so I, I, you know how it is that uh, borel cantley doesn't work in reverse, so you need some independence. But uh, independence is too uh, unnatural for dynamics, but independence on average is uh, fine. So that independence on average is obtained by uh, a, a decay of matrix coefficients for this. Uh, for this. So um, uh, what I mean is that uh, it's a general fact that if I look at uh, this uh, GT and apply it to uh, uh, say uh, two functions phi1 and phi2, so phi1 and phi2 are in L2 of this space. <laughs> That's true. Uh, basically, it's uh, mixing. <laughs> so. Uh, so, uh, so this, uh, so think about phi one and phi two as indicator functions of these uh, cusp neighborhoods. Okay, so then th this exactly measures the correlation between them, and so if I want this to go to zero so that the events are uncorrelated and Borel can tell he cancel. Yes, so it's a fact that as t goes to infinity, or as GT leaves compact sets, which in this case is the same thing. This is at most uh, e to the minus constant uh, t times uh, L2 norm of uh, phi1 times L2 norm of uh, phi2. So this is a, a, a somehow exponential decay of matrix coefficients for this. And uh, um, then you uh, take this and uh, plug it into this uh, Borel-Cantelli lemma of uh, either Schmidt or Springer or Philip and uh, do a little bit of uh, Work and it would come out. So uh, that's a good point. Uh, it's easier for the exposition. For the if I if I want to do the same thing without an S integer but with the with all the rational points, then over here I would need to uh, keep adding primes. So I'll add one more prime here and one more PID group and go on and on and get an Adeli group. And uh, all that is fine, everything is okay, but uh, the spectral estimates for Adeli groups are just uh, worse off than the spectral estimates for PID groups. That's just a fact about the harmonic analysis of Adeli groups. So the quality of the result is uh, compromised a little bit because uh, in the in this result for PID groups, as I said, there are nice situations where the the matrix coefficient, the sigma, the it's uh, the representation is tempered. So the sigma is exactly a half, and uh, I hit the bullseye because I have a two times a half. But for Adelic groups, I can never achieve this because of some uh, inherent. Uh, it's um, it's a simple. It's a fact about. I want, so I can't, uh, if I have all the rational points, then I get a worse estimate using this method. You shouldn't get a worse estimate. Then. Exactly, yes. That's what I was saying. So using, uh, you can get a non-trivial lower bound on sigma using, uh, if someone gives, so what we can prove is, if there is some uh, uniform estimate for the discrepancy, by which I mean that uh, 
So in a compact set, uh, the estimate is uniform. Error is bounded, uniformly bounded. Then you can, uh, uh, there's a technique uh, in representation theory called the burger sarnak method. So you can uh, plug this into the burger sarnak method and uh, you can get uh, a, a good bound on sigma if someone gives you this quantitative bound. This is uh, not, uh, I should say, that this kind of thing has been done before. Uh, there is a paper of uh, Lee and Sarnak from several years ago where they count integer points on homogeneous spaces and use uh, that to produce a spectral bound. So philosophically, it's kind of, uh, Instead of using uh, integer points on varieties, we are using rational points with congruence coefficients. 